hello. It's, uh, I was going to say the Friday talkie, but it's not, is it? It's the Saturday speaky, if you like. Call it what you like. It's me sitting here waffling at you. Trying not to bore you rigid. Uh, didn't have time to do a video yes, y yesterday. I can't talk. I got a bit of a headache and my brain isn't quite working right. So uh, expect gibberish. Um, yeah, I was busy yesterday, partly putting up a Christmas tree. And that tree was a bitch. <laughs> it was it's a new artificial one and it was the first time I've ever put it together and it was a bitch. It took ages. But it looks nice now. I'll show you at some point. But not now. Uh, other Christmas related stuff. I want to say a thank you to Paul Davies and Patty. You both know why. <laughs> now, okay, on to the, uh, the the topic that everyone, well, no, not everyone, a lot of people are talking about, a lot of people are aware of. I've spoken about it probably for at least the past two, maybe three Friday Talky type videos. Um, Content ID. I mean, there's a whole copyright thing going on with YouTube at the moment, and it's coming to a head. Though it's not going to be finished, as far as I'm aware, until January, but it is kicking off. What is happening now? Because it takes a little while to understand. You realise something has happened, something's changed, a lot of people are upset, and it's like, what the hell just happened? A lot of people are all of a sudden being hit with content ID claims when previously they weren't. We knew something was going to happen. We knew YouTube were going to get strict, but we didn't know exactly how and we didn't know exactly where it was going to be aimed. Well, it's been aimed at the people who are on the networks, MCNs they call them, multi-channel networks, call them what you like, I think a lot of them are a con, but anyway, the, the people on these networks up until now have largely been protected from content ID claims. The networks have had some kind of deal or rights or something, they've been a buffer, so I guess YouTube relied on the networks to check the content of the videos being uploaded and didn't check them itself. Maybe I'm wrong, that's kind of how I understand it, but something that has changed, that protection has now gone for the majority of people on networks, not all of them, but most of them. And so lots of these people who've been putting up videos, pretty much whatever the hell they like content wise, have lost their protection and are being hammered with content ID. And some really big channels are suffering for it. Um, classic game room. I mean, so many people are going to be so gutted. He he's been hammered with content ID, and he's he said that's it enough. He quits YouTube and he's moved over. He, he's embedding videos on his website. Uh, I've I've taken a look. He's um, I think he's being hosted by Daily Motion, and that's a damn shame. I mean, he has been an inspiration for so many people in the gaming and retro gaming community. He. I was, he was, he did inspire, he was an influence, he, he wasn't my inspiration, my inspiration was um, Collie UK, <laughs> yeah he doesn't make videos anymore either and that's a damn shame, but I was most definitely influenced by, by Classic Game Room, um, his, uh, something about his vocal delivery shall we say, I learned a lot about pacing and how how to speak, albeit, I mean, I, I do it differently because I do it live, but I learned about pacing from him, and he's he's been an inspiration to so many people, and he's he's gone. He said, enough. I don't know how much of his content will have been hit, but I think it will be a lot, because here's the thing. I feel a lot of sympathy for a lot of these channels who have been hit really hard. For a lot of them, it is their livelihood, and I feel sympathy for them. I have seen some people saying, what the bloody hell are they kicking up such a fuss about? Get a real job like the rest of us. And I think that's actually really bitter and unfair. If you had the opportunity to do your dream job, to make a living doing something you love, wouldn't you? 
Why not? These people had the opportunity and they took it. And now they've had, from their perspective, they've had the rug pulled out from under them. And in that sense, I do feel some sympathy. On the other hand, I feel the playing field has been levelled because now they've got to deal with the same things the rest of us have. Um, those of us who aren't on networks have had no protection whatsoever and we've had to play by the rules. I don't know how it is that the networks got around the rules, but they did. And the rest of us had to be aware of things like copyright. Um, don't put up music. It, don't have, you know, you, I've been turning off the music on all the games I've been putting up videos of lately. I've taken down loads of videos that have music in them because I knew it's going to be a problem. Things like that, no cutscenes. You kind of get to realise after a time you can't, you can't monetize if you've got cutscenes. It'll get hit with content ID. I mean, all of this, if, if you're not monetizing anyway, it just doesn't matter. And from just a viewer's perspective, mostly it ain't gonna matter, except classic game room. You know, it, it, it's gonna affect a lot of people who are just viewing. Um, but it does, it is leveling the playing field, and I kinda, I, I'm in two minds. I sympathize with those who have been hammered and their livelihood is being damaged, taken away. I sympathize. But on the other hand, level playing field we're all, God, to, to, use a, to use a bloody Tory phrase, we're all in it together now. I think if I have a really big issue with this current situation, it isn't that YouTube are applying the same rules to everyone now. I, I think, fair enough, the, uh, the third party networks have actually done a disservice to all of the people on them in that they haven't policed themselves, I think, Maybe, I'm, maybe I don't understand how it works, but this is how I perceive it. They haven't policed themselves. They've allowed their, their users, their members or whatever, to put up videos that will cause problems. You know, content ID, well, here we are. They're all uh, they're being hammered now. Those videos should not have been put up and monetized and whatnot. The, the network should have said, bit of a problem with that one. But maybe I misunderstand how that works. I suppose the thing is as well, I've looked at the, I've had masses of um, invitations from networks. Over the past year or so, I've been invited to loads, and I look at them and I think, what are you offering that I'm not getting already? And the only thing they've ever offered is protection from content ID. Uh, they say, we'll promote you. Well, I think in most cases they really don't. One or two lucky people get promoted, but largely they're offering nothing. And now, especially with these new rules, they have nothing to offer. They'll give you no protection, but they will take a cut of your money. Uh, I see them as being utterly pointless now. They, they don't, to my mind, serve any purpose whatsoever. They might say otherwise, but I see nothing being offered from any of the ones who are offering me partnership. Offering nothing that I don't get already. What I don't get, uh, th there are two things with this whole situation. YouTube actively encouraged people to sign to these networks. They, they wanted people to sign. If you wanted to monetize, it was in YouTube's interest. Maybe it made it easier for YouTube if you signed to a network rather than just using YouTube partnership. That's how it seemed. And then all of a sudden they pulled the rug out and the one thing that most people benefited from with a network was the protection from content ID and that's just gone out the window. Most of these networks are now completely pointless and all they're going to do is grab the money of their, their users. Um, so I don't get that. The other thing, and this is the big thing that bothers me with this situation, is the bogus content ID claims. All this whole situation, I would think, fair enough, if it wasn't for the fact that it allowed completely bogus individuals or companies to claim copyright ownership on material, music, video footage, that is nothing to do with them. And they're making money off of this. Because yes, people can counter claim, but in the time between them making the claim and the user counter claiming, they're making money off of it. And they're also relying on the fact that a lot of the little people out there 
you know, just little individuals, they're not necessarily going to know, is this company legit? Is this a genuine copyright owner or is it someone pulling a fast one? And they don't dare counterclaim because the penalty for doing a bogus counterclaim, um, there are serious penalties. And so some people just won't counterclaim and these bogus individuals or companies are making money off of other people's hard work whilst doing nothing themselves creating nothing, they're just parasites. It's the allowing this to happen that I find really objectionable. Um, and it comes down to the burden of proof. YouTube does not give a crap. The people making the claim, the, the bogus claim, I think, the people who own the material should have to prove it's theirs. But then, of course, if you've got little people who, who, who are having their stuff ripped off, they won't be able to afford or have the means to prove that something is theirs and is being ripped off. It is it's very frustrating. It basically means unless you're a corporation, you're going to get screwed. It doesn't matter if you're the content owner or if you're being subjected to a bogus copyright claim. You know, if you're being ripped off one way or the other, you're screwed. Uh, that's what I find objectionable about it. But, what can you do? Uh, in terms of content ID claims against you, all you can do is what myself and several others are doing and be very careful in what you put up. No cutscenes, no, as little music as possible really, um, and make damn sure that you're talking over it. And it is a grey area in terms of um, Let's Plays. Are they critical? Or are they just talking and commentary over play? You see, mine, I think I can legally get away with what I do because I say it's not a review. And technically speaking, what I do is not a review because for my videos, my gameplay videos to be reviews, I would have to learn the whole game and the ins and outs and be balanced about it. And I'm not. Um, but what I am being is critical. And I think in that sense, I... I have some legal standing in terms of whether I can monetize, whether I have the right to put gameplay video up because I am being critical. I am. It might be a completely unqualified opinion. No, it is a completely unqualified opinion. It's, it's like, it's totally unbalanced and I make no claims for them to be. But it is criticism and criticism is allowed. Where just talking about how your day went over a video game doesn't give you the right to put up the footage of that video game. I believe, sorry, in fact, even some of my, my random waffles over open world things are it's dubious. I've actually taken most of those down, I think, for, well, it's because they were modern games. Yeah, you have to be careful, but it it's going to make life very difficult more for the modern game players than the retro ones, I think. Mm. We will just see what happens. There is more to come in January. It's, it's the, the manual checking. But I, again, I think that's largely going to affect the people who are part of the networks rather than those who've been just with YouTube. We'll see. It's, uh, it's a worrying time for some, for many. For some, it will make no difference whatsoever. Anyway... Moving on, yes, I was asked a week ago, two weeks ago, Gran Turismo 6 has come out. I still haven't got it. I still haven't finished Gran Turismo 5 yet. DLC and microtransactions, because they're a big part of Gran Turismo 6, or at least the microtransactions were, and I was asked, what do I think of this? Because some people are really pissed off about it. Um... Because I haven't got Gran Turismo 6, I don't know how big of a deal they are on it. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about my view on that topic in general. On free-to-play games, and I mean there are lots of these on Android, I don't really have a problem with it. I suppose, because a lot of games are cheap on Android, I would actually rather buy a game outright and it be mine and not have to bother with microtransactions, but I guess these companies have found that it pays, and potentially pays more in the long run. 
I, I don't really object to it on a free-to-play game. I think, okay, it's a different and new and novel funding method, but fine. On a game that you've paid for, you've paid full price, what about that? That's a different kettle of fish. Gran Turismo, Battlefield, three, four, I guess, whatever. There are microtransactions on that. Do I find that objectionable? There are two ways of um, this being implemented on a full price game, and one I object to and one I don't, and I don't know if the one I object to is actually being done. What, as I understand it, on ba certainly on Battlefield and probably on Gran Turismo, you can... All of the things that are available for you to pay for, you can get anyway, but you have to grind. You have to... See, I object to the term grinding in this context. You have to play the game. If you want the fancy gun, you've got to make progress. You've got to score the points, get the game experience, get the kills, and then you can get the better gun. Or you can just be impatient and pay for it. I don't object to that, because guess what? I bought the game because I want to play it. I don't... I suppose I understand the people who will pay for it. They haven't got the time to play the game. They want the fancy gun because they think it'll give them an advantage when they're on the occasions that they actually do play it. Uh, Solve that. Start at the start. That's my view. But I, under, you know, I don't object to it. If some people want to pay, fine. It doesn't give them a massive, massive advantage. You can get... In fact, the weapon itself, I find the later weapons don't offer a massive advantage over the earlier weapons. The, the things that you bolt onto it do, the kind of sights you've got, or the heavy barrel or whatever, in Battlefield, those make a difference, but you can get them really quite quickly just by playing the game. So that kind of thing I don't object to. And the same, Gran Turismo. I play the game, and I get the cars as I progress. Gran Turismo has always been about that. You start at the start with a shitty car and you play it and you play it and you play it and you make progress and you get the better cars. To just spend a load of money to get all of the cars to me seems pointless. Why, why buy the game if you're not going to play it, if you're just going to throw money at it? That is bizarre. But some people want to do that. Fine. I don't have a problem with that. If they've got the option, Sony... Polyphony, whatever you want to call them, they, they will gladly take that money. Options are good. The only thing that I find ludicrous is that one car, or th that some of the cars are insanely expensive. And I mean, there's that one that's like $200 or something crazy. Is it a Jaguar? Summer. That's crazy. And uh, I'm kind of actually amused that that is there as an option. It's going to be like, who is mad enough? to spend that kind of money for a piece of in-game content. You've got to be crazy. Maybe some people are. I don't, I don't hold it against Polyphony for doing that, or Polyphony, or however you want to pronounce it. I, I, I kind of think maybe that was some kind of in-joke, perhaps. It's mad, but it's kind of funny, because who's dumb enough? Where I would object on any of this kind of game, a full price game that you've paid for, I would object if you reached a point, and this can happen on some free to play games, you reach a point in the game where you just cannot progress any further unless you spend more money for something, an object or fuel. I had this in a farming game that I tried on Android. I was driving my tractor around and I ran out of fuel. And the only way I could get more fuel was to buy it with real money. Ugh. In a free-to-play game, that's irritating. In a game you've paid for, unacceptable. And if that happened, if, if any of those kind of games reached that point, I would be very, very, very pissed off. Downloadable content. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. Um... Battlefield and Gran Turismo, I have bought extra maps or extra circuits. Actually, the extra circuit on Gran Turismo served very little purpose. I, I bought the Spa circuit, but since it doesn't, as far as I can tell, feature, having bought the circuit, it doesn't feature in the single-player game, except if you do a time trial or something. I, I don't know where it... Where did you get to use it? Online, I guess. 
Um, so that wasn't such good value, but I don't mind. It's something that wasn't on the disc. Battlefield, I bought extra maps. I bought Back to Carcand, or however you pronounce it. I bought um, that Armoured Kill thing uh, with all the tanks and helicopters and stuff. and That's fantastic. It's great. I don't mind. Extra content. In that sense, I have no problem with it. I think it's great. What I object to is unlockable content. You've bought your game. You've paid full price. And then if you pay a bit more, you can unlock this extra content that's already on the disc. Well, no. If it's already on the disc, it's not extra content. You've crippled the game. And you're making people pay to uncripple it? No. Not acceptable. Downloadable content should be extra stuff at the end. Um, if it's on the disc, it should be in the game, in the main game. You shouldn't be charging extra for it. That's just bullshit. And I find that objectionable. Yeah, so there it is. Some circumstances, it's all good. Um, microtransactions, if they're done right, fine. If they're, if they're used to cripple the game so you can't pro progress in a game you paid for, not okay. Downloadable, if it's extra content after you're done, fine. If it's just, you know, what I just said. There I am repeating myself. That's my thinking on that. Okay, another topic. Um... Yes, playing um, Wolfenstein 3D this week sort of got me thinking, games do you think you won't like? Well, actually, I mean, there, there are three different things here. It, it is a game that I thought I wouldn't be impressed by. And I really was. I thought I wouldn't like it. I thought I would be bored. And I found that, actually, no, I really enjoyed it. And that kind of got me thinking, kind of a tangent, really, about... Games you find that you like, that are actually really unpopular and most people think are, are, are absolute shit. And conversely, games that most people really, really love, that you don't like. Because I have some of those. I don't know if I can make a very big topic out of this. It's kind of like, well, what are your... What is, it, what is a game you thought you wouldn't like, but you found that you did? And I suppose conversely, a game, yes, there is a game that I thought I would like, and I didn't. And that was Little Big Planet. Uh, there'd been lots and lots of hype, and it sounded great. It was um, creativity. I'm big on creativity. I like to make stuff. I, I am a creative person. And I thought, this sounds fantastic. And I, I just found the learning curve far too... It's not that it was too steep. It's not... It was that if I stopped doing it for a day or two days or something like that, I couldn't just come back to it and remember what to do. Something about it was too hard. Um, you know, I, I, I learn all these things, all these features, all these controls, but they were just too easy to forget, so I couldn't come back to it and carry on. And that uh, it never really felt like a game. It. It just it didn't hit the spot with me at all. I was very disappointed. Um, so that's one I thought I would like and I didn't. Games that are widely regarded to be crap. That I really like. Well, there's one that comes to mind. And that's hard driving on the Mega Drive. Um, it, it gets panned by lots of people. And the press at the time um, said, not very good. I love it. I loved it back in the day, and I still love it now. It's still my... I mean, I've got better versions of hard driving, and like arcade perfect-ish, more or less, versions on the PS2, and then like race driving on the um, Saturn, and hard driving 2 on the Amiga. These are all very good, very accomplished, nice, smooth. They play well. Good frame rates and whatever, but I still like to go back to hard driving on the Mega Drive with its like maybe 10 frames a second if you're lucky. Um, I love it and I just go round and round and round the speed circuit and I don't even bother with the stunt circuit. You know, people think it's crap, I love it. Games that are regarded to be brilliant that I don't like. <laughs> okay, 
Zelda. <laughs> Zelda the Ocarina of Time. I've only ever played two Zelda games. Um, I've played one that's on the Wii and I can't remember what it's called. It's up there. Twilight Princess? Is that what it was? I thought it was something else. Whatever. I played one on the Wii. I, I played it for about not very long at all and I was just like there and that that kind of started my <sighs> that didn't start my dislike for Zelda that started my dislike for the Wii <laughs> I just it, it it was just the Wii all over for me I was like I don't like this I'm not interested and uh, Ocarina of Time I did a video of that I've since taken it down because Nintendo are bastards uh, in terms of gameplay there any of their I don't know if it's third party, but if it's their content, their characters, they don't like you putting videos up. So, yeah, I did a video of um, Zelda Ocarina of Time, and I, I played it, and I was very disparaging. I was doing it deadpan. I, I was kind of amused as I was playing it, but I was amused at how much I didn't like it. <laughs> people didn't get the humour, and I, I got really hammered by people objecting to my opinion. Um, but, yeah... Didn't like that. Don't like that at all. Other. I'm not a fan of any of the Mario games. Apart, um, Mario Kart, absolutely. Um, but the platform games, I won't say I out and out dislike them, but they, they just they don't hit the spot for me at all. Um, and I know they're good, accomplished, well-made, and sometimes even works of genius. I totally acknowledge that. But they don't do it for me. But I think the one actually that I out and out dislike, I do not like playing. I won't say it's a crap game, but I really don't like playing that is massively popular is um, Manic Miner on the Sinclair Spectrum. It's a massive, massive hit. It's probably like synonymous with the Spectrum in the UK. If, you, if you've got a Spectrum, you've got Manic Miner. If you played it back in the day, you played Manic Miner. Not me. Didn't like it then. Don't like it now. Pixel perfect platforming has no place in my gaming whatever thing. The kind of games I like to play. It's no place. But for me, if I'm going to play a Spectrum game, it's going to be Jetpack. That's more like it. Yeah. So, um... Game you thought you wouldn't like, but you did. Game everyone says it's great, but you don't like. And game everyone says it's crap, but you do like. Hmm, what are yours? That's about that then. Coming up, more 3DO. I've, I've got quite a few 3DO games. Um, and probably more content ID discussion or whatever as and when all of that happens because you know YouTube aren't done yet there's more things are going to happen we'll just see and I'm going to shut up now because my head hurts <laughs> yeah um, other than that I, I what, what what's the date when's Christmas yeah we're gonna have another video before Christmas excellent jolly good um, so I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the thumbs up button. I upload videos daily, so go ahead and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more. To all those who've already subscribed, I'd just like to say a great big thank you.